friends, welcome to Prime Strings. I'm Henriette and this is Learn Suzuki Violin in 30 Days, Day 2. Thank you so much if you left a comment after the Day 1 course. If you have any questions or comments after this Day 2 video, please leave them in the comment section below this video. If you enjoy taking part in this course, please like this video and share it with your family and friends or anyone who might be interested in learning the violin. So if you have not already done so, please subscribe to this channel and hit the bell button so I can let you know whenever new videos are released. Today we will be building on what we have learned in day one. And we will also learn how to play long and short bows and how to read music. But at first we will briefly recap the main points of day one and refresh your memories. In day one we learned the names of the strings, G, D, A, and E. And we talked about the bow hold and about straight bowing and elbow le levels. But before we get back to those issues, I will give you a moment to tune your violin now. This is your A. Next, I'll play you a D tuning note. And here is the G. tuning note if you need more time for tuning just stop this video for a moment and um, join it again when you finish tuning so now let's have a look at your bow hold again and let's put your violin down for a moment we started off with a ring between our middle finger and our thumb and then picked up the bow uh, there with your thumb in that little corner and all your fingers over the bow um, with a slight space between your index finger and middle finger these two fingers are together and a slight space between your ring finger and your pinky your pinky was on the side edge of the bow and it's curved as much as you can manage at this stage so now to develop this bow hold a little bit further we're going to be doing some exercises that will make your bow hold uh, just consolidate a little bit more but it also makes it more flexible so I'm going to start doing some waves and um, all I'm doing is I'm making my wrist really supple now all the time that I'm doing this I want you to bear in mind that your thumb is a bent underneath the bow and that your little finger is also still on the side edge as you go about this exercise Okay, next up we're going to do some windscreen wipers and we're going to move the bow sideways like that. Now I would like you to feel that you feel the shift in balance um, so your thumb is really the pivoting point and you feel the shift in balance as I come over this way I can feel more pressure on my pinky and as I'm going across the top I feel how I can hold the bow with my index finger. And that shift in balance you will learn to feel much more precisely later on but we're going to start it early on um, so that it promotes a good bow hold. Now let's have the bow upright now and let's crawl up towards the point of the bow and then once you've reached the point see if you can get back step by step and you crawl all the way back 
to the heel of the bow. That may take a little while. Be careful that you don't get stuck in between the hair and the stick with your thumb. And then once you get back to the heel of the bow, I would like you to find that nice bow hold again. So I'm going to be thinking about my thumb being bent underneath again. And I'm going to think about the placement of my fingers over the bow. And you can see that my bow is about in the middle of my middle finger. So I see this quite a lot. And all you need to do, if that's you, drop your fingers over the bow a little bit further. And then my pinky again is on the side edge. So now let's pick up the violin again. And if you have got a shoulder rest, I will show you again how to fit it on your violin. So have your violin upside down. I'll show you how to fit the shoulder rest. I am taking my shoulder rest as a smiley face. So I'm keeping it this way around so that it looks more or less like a smiley face. The legs on the left hand side hook on the side of the violin there. And then I'm going to grab it and stretch it a tiny bit so that the right hand little legs can go around the right side of my violin. And I'm pulling it so that it's more or less across the greatest width of the violin. Now that varies a little bit from person to person where you find it comfortable, but have a look at this shape being more or less a smiley face and then you've got it the right way round. Now let's put the violin on your shoulder and we said yesterday that um, your violin is neither straight to the front and nor is it straight to the left. Uh, it's about at a 45 degree angle and your left hand holds the violin here. So make sure that your violin sits quite high up on your shoulder. It's not sort of under your chin like we always think it a violin, like we always think a violin should be, but it is to the side and on your shoulder. So what I'm doing is I'm putting it on my collarbone here and then I'm sliding it sideways like that. Now your violin will, will end up being very close to your ear here, and you want to make sure that your jaw this corner of your jaw is on the chin rest that, that thing is called a chin rest uh, but i put my jaw on it and now i just want you to try and hold that violin with no hands that is a very useful exercise to make the muscles at the back of your neck a little bit stronger um, and that is what we need for good violin playing okay so you can try that a couple of times with me don't worry if you find that incredibly difficult, uh, that will develop and it will come. So not to worry if that today is still a bit challenging. So let's now pick up the bow again and let's place the bow on the G string in the middle of the bow. And we will check out our elbow levels as we did last time. Now, I want you to be aware that it is your elbow that guides the, the bow across from one string to another. So it is not your wrist or your hand that moves the bow like that. Um, your wrist for now should be static and not wavy. And you use your elbow to guide you across like that. So once you are comfortable with this, we are going to play on the A string. And the A string is the second string from the right hand side. And I would like you to focus on playing long bows so you go from the heel of the point, this is where you start, uh, to the point of the bow, all the way aiming to play straight bows. So your hand moves forward rather than sideways. And if there is somebody with you in your house, you may ask them to check if your bow is travelling parallel to the bridge because it is very difficult to check for yourself that you're totally straight. You can of course check it out in a mirror, but it's still quite tricky to see for yourself. So we're going to be playing on all four strings in the order of A, D, E and G. And we're continually going to monitor our elbow levels as well as our straight bows. And we're going to play four times each bow. Sorry, four times each string.
bows. In violin playing, we are always exactly aware where on the bow we are. I am going to mark the middle of my bow with a sticker. If you have a pencil, um, if you prefer a pencil, you can put a tiny little pencil mark in the middle of your bow. I am marking my bow really on the wrong side so that you can see it, uh, but if you are marking your bow, you should put it on this side and I'm going to mark my bow uh, on this side so you can see it. There we are. So if that is done, we can start playing with short bows. So I want you to start at the heel of the bow and you bow towards the marker and back. And we're going to be bowing four times on each of the strings, starting on G. So now we are playing on what is called the lower half of the bow. <laughs> exploring the upper half of the bow. This time we are going to start at the point of the bow and we will be bowing towards the middle, towards that marker is. So when the bow travels in the direction from the point of the heel, this way, it's called up bow. The other direction from heel to point is called down bow and you can see your arm goes down into the down bow. So we're going this time to start on the E string on an up bow and I want you to make sure that you push your bow arm forward when you start it, like that. And we, got, we are going to be playing four times on each string with half bows on the upper half. Here we go. straighten your arm to stretch your arm out right in front of you um, so that means that you're playing nicely with long bows so well done if your arms are a bit tired from holding up the violin or from bowing that's completely normal so let's put the bow and the violin down for a moment let's take a short break and swing your arms so that you'll get the blood flowing properly again and this is just a matter of building stamina, so I'm just going to let the blood flow again in my arms. And you will soon find that you can play for a longer period of time without needing a break. So I want you just to get your shoulders to get loose. And whilst we are relaxing for a moment, I would like you to have a look in your Suzuki book. Um, as I said before, in the introduction to this course, I am using the Suzuki method, book one. So if you have your book already, um, let's take a look at it now. And I'm going to go straight to page 21. Uh, and there's a lot of music on page 21. Don't worry if you can't read music. You will learn it as we go along. Now you may notice that music notes are written on a stave, which is this set of five lines. Each of the dots on the stave represents one sound. And the higher the note is placed on the stave, the higher pitch the sound is when you hear it. So for example, in, uh, in example A, the notes are right at the very top. So they sound quite high and we, these are E's, so it means you will be playing on the E string. If you now take a look at the second line of example A, you can see that the dots are placed much lower down uh, on the stave and these notes represent the note that we play on the A string. So this is an A and that is an E. By the way, in music you always focus on the dots and not, of the stem, not on the stems of the notes because sometimes stems can be written up and at other times they can be written down. Uh, we will go into stems at another, uh, at another time but for now just focus on the dots of the notes. 
So I would like you to learn what the A and E strings look like in music. So if you can memorize these two for our next lesson, day three, it will make playing a lot easier. So the top line are E's and this line are all A's. Don't worry about it, how we're going to play it, but I just want you to know what these A and E's look like in music. I am hoping that your arms are feeling better again. So before we carry on and do some more playing in this lesson, I want you to try one more awareness exercise. I want you to feel how your shoulders can work independently from your elbows. So if you want to do this exercise with me. First, I want you to lift your shoulders up towards your ears and then lower them again. You can do this a few times so that you can consciously drop your shoulders. Now, lift your elbows and I call this my chicken wing exercise. So your, your elbows are up like chicken wings. Now can you still lift your shoulders up towards your ears? Like that. So you can see, you can use your shoulders independently from your elbows. I can put my shoulders up and down with my elbows up or with my elbows down. Now let's pick up the violin and the bow again. And we are going to play with a low right shoulder. I want you to imagine that while you bow, your shoulder sits in its lowest position as we, as, as we have practiced in our chicken wing exercise. So let's start on the G string again. And this time we will bow with long bows and we'll play four times each string. And this time I want you to focus on keeping this right shoulder down. But at the same time, your right elbow will need to be adapting for the right string level. Uh, that may be very confusing and I will show you and talk you through what I mean as we go along. So we'll take it slowly. So I'm going to start on the G string here. So my elbow in this low is in its highest position. Uh, and I want you to check that your shoulder is in its lowest position. So your elbow is high, your shoulder is low. Let's do four times on G. Next we're going to go to the D string. So that means my elbow is going to lower a little bit so that I get the correct level for the D string. Make sure now that you drop your shoulder down. Off we go. We'll play four long notes on D. Next up is the A string, so my elbow is going to go down a little bit so that my bow moves towards the A string. And I want you to check again that your shoulder is in its lowest position. And we'll play the A four times. Great. We'll do the same with the E string, so my elbow lowers yet further. And I'm just checking that my shoulder is in its lowest position as well. Off we go. I commend you for sticking with me today and for trying such technical exercises at this early stage of your learning. I introduced this this early because it will help you a great deal later on to have this technique nailed from the start. So well done. In a moment we're going to wrap up this lesson and can I suggest that you loosen your bow and dust your violin before packing them in your violin case. You have made incredibly good progress today. So if you have enjoyed this lesson hit the like button now please and also share it with your family and friends or with anyone who might be interested in learning how to play the violin, hit the bell button too, because then I can send you notifications every time a new lesson in this series is published. Thank you so much for watching. I look forward to seeing you in day three.